Hello first and second graders, it's Mrs. Beeler again. This week we are going to be focusing on value. And I'll kind of explain what value is as we start to get into our lesson. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, for this week's lesson, what you'll need is a piece of white paper, a piece of black construction paper, um, a paintbrush, two colors of paint. One of them can be white and one of them can be whatever color you want, as long as you have the white one, glue and scissors. If you don't have black construction paper, you could just draw this on a piece of white paper and um, cut it out and glue it on as long as you color it black. You'll be good to go. So the first thing we're gonna do on our is paint our white paper for the background. Now, like I said, we'd be focusing on value. Value is when something goes from light to dark. So how we're gonna do that is we are gonna start by just doing a dip of purple like this on our brush. So there's not a lot, I just dipped my brush in purple, but I'm gonna mix that into this big um, pile or part of white paint. I'm just kind of mixing it. And this is a lot of white paint just because I wanted to make sure that I had enough to start. And I'm just gonna paint now that that's mixed in. See how that's like almost still white, but it's just a little bit of a light purple. And I'm just gonna start kind of in this corner. I'm gonna paint a circle. And that's really light. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna dip my brush like this. Oopsies, that's a little bit too much paint on that. So I'm gonna wipe that off because it didn't even pick up any purple. Um, I'm gonna dip my brush back in the purple. So it's just this much purple on it. And again, I'm gonna stir that in to my white paint. And I'm not worried about getting the edges because I see now that I don't need all that. So you probably won't need as much paint as I have here. And then I'm gonna use that. I'm gonna paint a circle around that first circle with this new color. Okay, again, I'm gonna wipe off the excess just because I had too much. And I'm gonna dip my brush again to get some more purple just like that, and I'm gonna mix that in the center part. Just kind of stirring. And I can see like right here in the middle of this, how it's a little bit darker. And I'm gonna do a circle of that now. wipe off my excess again and while I'm thinking about this I'm just gonna go ahead and kind of wipe this excess over here so that it's easier for me to mix my paint and take a little bit of that actually out of there there it's not painting if you don't get a little messy right <laughs> the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dip my brush again getting some more purple and mix that in this should be a little bit easier now to mix since I took off that extra. And now that I look at this, I don't think that's quite dark enough, so what I'm gonna do is wipe my brush again um, and dip and get a little bit more purple. So two dips this time and kind of mix that in just because I wanna make sure that I'm getting a little bit of a noticeable change in color. So that's a little darker, I can see that now. And I'm just doing another circle around that, using that color of purple. And then same thing, I'm gonna wipe off my excess and I'm gonna get some more dark purple Mix it in. And I'm gonna do two again, just so I can get a noticeable change. Dipped my brush, got some dark purple, and mix it in. And the reason I'm not scooping a ton is because the purple might overpower my thing then, and I don't want that to happen. So that's why we're just dipping our brush rather than scooping a ton of that purple because the dark purple is gonna be stronger 
than the white. Because if I were to try and put it the opposite way, it would make the, um, it'd be way too purple. You wouldn't be able to see the gradual change of value. Same thing, wipe off my excess. I'm gonna kind of get some purple with my brush, put it in here. And again, I'm gonna wipe off my excess, whoopsies, and get some more dark purple, put it in. A little bit at a time is the best way to mix colors. That way, whoopsies, I accidentally got some of that on the side. That way you don't get too dark too fast. Just keep painting more circles. And obviously at some point you'll go off the paper. I'm not worried about getting any on the table because I know that I can wipe it off. But if that's um, something that might be concerning to you, you might wanna put like newspaper down or something so you don't actually get on the table. And I'm basically just going to keep on doing this, getting like two dips of my paintbrush of purple each time until I have my paper pretty much full. At some point, I want to get to where um, I might be grabbing just that dark purple to paint with. try and scoop this part that's on top so that I'm getting rid of that so it's not mixing. And that was more than enough to change the color. So I'll put a ring in that. I just want to kind of scoop off that light part that's on top right there and I know that's going to be enough to change my color. Like I said, you absolutely don't have to do purple. You can do whatever color you want. I just really like purple because I know that it's a dark color, so it'll give me that kind of Halloween feel. Um, but orange could work. Blue is also a dark color. I think that would work really well. Really, you can do this with any color. Like I said, I just like purple. Next, again, gonna get this part off the top. Let's put that in there, get it mixed up. We're just looking for that nice gradual change of color. Or by color, I mean value, because that's actually what we're working towards. We want that nice gradual change of value. It's going from a very, very light purple to a very, very dark purple. I'm gonna take a little bit of this out now because I know I don't need that much paint left. And I'm just gonna move it aside because I wanna be able to take this and have it get a lot darker so that we can eventually get to that solid purple. See how that just got a lot darker? And if you need to at any point, obviously you can refill your colors, right? So if I ran out of dark purple, I could go ahead and um, add more to add to there. The reason that I started with so much white is because you don't wanna have to add more white once you go because then you'll be going backwards and getting lighter in your color. So I, I wanted to start with too much because I can always pull it out like you saw, but I can't really add it back in because then it would be getting lighter again rather than getting to the darker purples like I have here. 
So it's better to start with too much white and have to pull some out and add more dark purple than to go the opposite way. All right, I think I'm only gonna have to add, I'm gonna pull some more out right now. I'm gonna have to add dark purple one more time, I think. And then I'll be able to go. That's nice and dark. Yep, so I'm gonna do this corner up here. And like I said, you might wanna put down um, a newspaper or something because it is a lot easier to get a nice circle when you um, can go off the page. All right, and then I'm gonna go wipe this off and I'm gonna grab this dark purple color. I'm gonna mix that in so it's all nice and even though. Like that, and I'm gonna finish this corner off with my dark purple. So now we can see how it started with this light purple, almost white, and went all the way to dark. And all we did was use a white and a dark purple and gradually add more of that dark purple to the white to get the colors of our rings, our circles around our page. And that's all that you need to do for the actual painting part. All right, something I wanted to show you quick um, that's not painting that you could possibly do if you don't have any paint at home or can't get some is using crayon. So if I look and I found my two purples, there's two, I would say this one's lighter and this one's darker. So what you can do is you would also start with your color and you would take that lighter purple, which is this one, and just kind of very lightly color a circle on your paper. And then I would maybe draw another circle and I would color it in, but this time I might press a little bit harder. And I would keep going, pressing harder and harder until I got to the darkest that I could get with this. So I'm just gonna kind of show you a value scale on here with two crayons of purple um, until you, you would just do yours till you filled the page. So if I was going really light and I'm gradually pressing harder and then I'm pressing as hard as I can and coloring nice and solid. So see how I can get that nice value of light to dark just by pressing harder with my crayon. Um, and same thing, so this is already kind of dark, but I could also kind of like um, make it even darker with this if I wanted to layer a little bit and kind of help with that as well to get go from a really light to a dark, just kind of layering and doing different um, pressures of crayon. Because obviously this is a lot lighter than when I press hard like this. So it just depends how you're pressing with your crayon that you can get that. Obviously the easiest way to practice our value is going to be with the paint and the two colors, but if you don't have paint, this is definitely something you do, just changing the pressure of how hard you press with your crayon as well for your background. All right, moving on to the construction paper. Now, like I said, you're gonna do this on black construction paper, or if you don't have black construction paper, you could draw it on white and then color it black and glue it on. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and draw a bat. The easiest way to draw a bat is to draw a circle for the head and then kind of a curve, almost like the smile of someone's mouth, like that. And then I'm going to add these little poke uh, triangles for the bottom of the bat wings and then the bat ears. Now, obviously, you can see my white crayon on this but that's okay because you're gonna cut it out and glue it on flipped over. But when I'm cutting this out, I am going to make sure not to cut like on these parts of this line, like right here. If you wanna go ahead and mark that, you can, but I'm not cutting on these lines. I want to cut this bat out in one piece. So I'm just gonna cut all the way around the edges of my bat. I am not going to cut these little pieces off. Now, if you cut those off on accident, obviously you're gluing it down. So you could just go ahead and um, glue them right next to it anyways, but not a big deal. But I just wanna try my best to cut on the outside of my bat. 
Now I didn't want like a super giant bat because I wanted to still be able to see my values changing in my background. So I just did, you know, a decent sized bat. But if you wanted, you could do it bigger or smaller. You could do more than one bat if you wanted. It's totally up to you. Or if there's something else that you wanted to do in black and cut that out and glue that on, you could do that as well. Right, so I've got my background and I've got my bat and I'm gonna put my glue on the side that I drew. Now, if you didn't draw it with a white crayon, that's fine. I just did it with white crayon so you could see it, but you could do a pencil too. But I just wanted it to be easier for you to see in the video. So I'm just gonna kind of put a little bit of glue on my bat, making sure that I've got all the way up in like the wings and the ears of the bat, kind of around the edges, and then a little bit spread out nice and evenly throughout. I'm gonna take my bat, see how that looks really nice because there's no lines, and I'm going to just place it on my painting. Now you could wait for yours to dry. Mine's still a little bit wet, so I'm just carefully pressing as to not touch the paint with my fingers. And then there, I have my nice bat value painting. Looks really nice. It's ready to go. And like I said, if you wanted, you could put some more little bats on here as well. I'm gonna go ahead and stop my video, but I will put a picture of my finished product at the end as well.